morning everybody we're in Brainerd Minnesota I have an empty step deck behind me I need to put something on it and go back to Canada the stuff I need to put on it is waiting for me in Davenport Iowa It'll be some farm equipment that's going uh, several drops into Saskatchewan and Alberta I'm planning on taking it through but we'll figure that all out tomorrow I'm loading it up tomorrow so I have today to get there. It's about an eight hour drive from here. A little bit of a hike. Well, hey, if it's worth it, we'll take the hike, right? Uh-oh, looks like my lane is blocked up ahead there. Maybe not. Looks like there's a tow truck there. Hey, 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 little maverick. Hey, no need to be aggressive. What a weird looking truck, eh? A little Ford Maverick. What is that? Is that like the new, the new midsize from Ford? The new Ford Ranger or something? Maverick, what is that? It looks like a, like a Honda Pilot or something. Ridgeline, that's what I was thinking of, a Honda Ridgeline. So I'm getting a little bit low on fuel here. I have another hour to go till I'm in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where they got the cheapest juice. I'm hoping I can make it there without any problems. See, this is where all the flashing lights are that I saw before. What's going on here? Somebody's getting towed, maybe a DUI. Let me get into that lane. Give him a little bit of extra space here. Oh no, it was an accident. Earlier today, before I started vlogging, uh, I saw what looked like a bunch of cops on the other side of town impounding someone's vehicle. Looked like he was drinking they had a whole bunch of stuff out beside the car and they had him sitting in the grass handcuffed whoops that'll ruin your day don't drive drunk we're in st cloud minnesota right ahead here is our cheap juice three dollars and forty cents a u.s gallon I still don't know why, but St. Cloud always has the cheapest fuel in Minnesota. At least in this region, up and down the 94, that's I-94 over there. They must have a different uh, tax system, like a local tax system here or something, but whatever it is, gets me coming back even though this parking lot is an absolute nightmare. Look at it, it's already all backed up out onto the street. Everybody else has figured out that this is where you get the cheap stuff. Oh. Usually you don't have to wait too long unless if some people decide to take like their half hour or maybe like a double half hour break in the pumps. That happens too. You gotta try not to get stuck behind those geniuses. Lovely people. Lovely people that are in desperate need of a good smack. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're backed out onto the street. Uh, yeah. yeah, I won't even be able to get around this corner even if I get a green light. It's all plugged up there by the pumps. The pumps are over there. All the way out onto the street. Both those trucks want to turn in there. This guy wants to turn in there. I bet you that guy wants to turn in there. And I want to turn in there. Oh, it's a, a special nightmare today. I really wish the staff here would go up and down, like walk up and down the pumps, making sure that people aren't just parked there. It's every time I come here, at least one truck. It's just parked there, you know, not doing nothing. Who knows where they are? Maybe they're in the shower. Maybe they're eating supper somewhere. I don't know. There's always one. 
And there's only what, like six pumps here? Oof, this is gonna be brutal. Uh, and that guy's gonna go in there too. I can't enter the intersection until that street over there is clear. So I got a red light so far. Okay, I think, I, I think I'll have space. Nope, I won't. So I'm gonna stay as far to the left part of my lane as possible so that people can still get by on my right. This guy in front of me is not doing the same. He doesn't have a signal on either. But we're moving in slowly. Oh, that guy over there's got his axle slid right to the back of his van trailer. It's making it very hard for him to get around that corner of that truck there. Okay, see, I like to stay all the way to the left here so the traffic can still get through on my right. That way we're not plugging things up too much. He's going to go in there, and I think I'm going to be able to fit in the driveway now. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes, I'll be able to fit in there. Thank you. He's waving me in. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Gotta go into one of these pumps here. Might have to kiss the curb a little bit on this side. Okay, now we're not getting out until these guys go forward. So when you come into a truck stop like this and it's really packed, you have to pick a lane. I know you wanna wait back there and see which one's faster and then go in that one. You're plugging up the entire driveway and out onto the street then. You have to pick one. So this guy beside me picked the first one. This bobtail here picked the third. That guy, the reefer there, picked the fourth. And they left this aisle here and I picked this one. This is the second one. I don't know if he's going to be fast or not. There's a guy parked in front of him over there. But we each picked a lane now, which opens up the driveway behind us for more drivers to get off the road. And then we're not all plugging things up. Does that make sense? Because I know when you come up to a, a bunch of full fuel islands, people have the habit of, you know, waiting way back there, not picking a lane until they see someone move forward. Then they'll pick that lane. I get why they're doing that. Everybody's in a hurry, but. That's my advice anyway. It's not a rule or anything. That's just my humble trucker Josh advice for the YouTubes. Now that guy's gonna move forward. Was there another lane over there? Oh, if there was, then that guy's gonna take it. I think there was an empty lane on the other side of that guy yet. No, never mind. There's uh, it's blocked off right there. Okay, yeah. See, so you got another guy coming in here. He's lining up in here now. Good times, good times. Had by all. Good times, had by all. This guy's fueling up his truck. Looks like he just came from the beach. He's got his beach clothes on, his flip flops. Good for him, you know. Good for him. I prefer to have shoes that aren't going to slip. 
But I get the comfort factor. I, I do get it. Why is that guy going out the egg the entrance? Oh man, he's gonna be messing things up. You see that guy back there in my mirror? As much of a kerfuffle as we got going on right here, we got guys like that that are messing everything up, going out the entrance, messing things up. Oh boy, just another day in paradise, boys. Another day in paradise. At least that guy's dressed for it. Well, that was fun. With all the time of waiting to fuel in line, I ended up getting my half hour. So yes, Trucker Josh took his half hour in the fuel lineup, not in the pumps. Now the GPS is set for Davenport, Iowa, 668 kilometers. That's gonna be about six and a half to seven hours of driving if we don't hit any traffic on the way through Minneapolis and along the way. But we got full tanks of fuel. We bought 185 US gallons or 700 liters. Cost me 685 or yeah, $685 American or $839 Canadian. The price of fuel here was $3.40 US per US gallon. Or with all conversions, a dollar nineteen nine for a liter Canadian. Canadian company hires me to bring it down to their friends in the US. 
And then once I drop that off, another Canadian company buys something from our friends in the US, and then the Canadian company hires me to go get it for them and bring it back. It works the same way the other way around if you're an American. You can't pick up in Winnipeg and deliver to Calgary. There's huge, huge fines for doing that if you get caught. And it's hard to uh, not get caught when you gotta, you know, account for everything at the end of the year or end of the quarter. Like, hey, how did you pick up this load here and drop it there? You're not allowed to do that. How'd you get this payment? Like, where'd this payment come from? <laughs> right? Well, there's a dog in the ditch. There's a, there's a little, little dog. Where do you belong, buddy? There's no farms around here. You're a long way from home. Go home. Why was there a dog in the ditch? He's gonna cross the road yet. It's not the greatest spot, but it's not the worst at all. I had to circle the lot here for a little while until I found a spot. It was very annoying. There was a bunch of spots in the back, but they were dangerous in my opinion. And I did not feel comfortable sleeping there overnight, so I left those alone and I kept circling and kept circling until somebody left. It looks like somebody across from me left there too. There's another spot open there now, but I think I've got plenty of space so that when this guy leaves in the morning, he can get around me to the left there. Plenty of room, plenty of room. And this guy has kind of a big rear end on his trailer. His axles are a little farther forward. Oh, they're actually not too bad. He shouldn't hit me with the back of his trailer when he turns left. I think I'll be good here. So that was my day today. 
it was quite a long day 900 kilometers or uh how many miles would that be 560 miles that's my best guess right now 900 divided by 1.61 559 miles i was pretty close there holy smokes wow okay so uh 560 miles and uh, i'm gonna shut her down for night here we're gonna get going in the morning gotta go just into davenport pick up my load i believe it'll be uh front end loaders uh not the buckets but just like the 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 arms for the loaders uh and i've got six drops i think let's see where is this load going to i'm still not sure if i'm going to be taking it all the way through i'm pretty sold on the fact that i'm going to be doing it uh i'll probably be going so pick up tomorrow start heading home which will be friday and saturday i'll swing past home spend the afternoon evening and night at home leave sunday be in where's my first drop first drop come on come on here which way does it go first drop is in emerald park saskatchewan uh, so uh, yeah, if I leave Sunday, even afternoon, I could be there Sunday evening, Sunday night, and then start delivering Monday morning. So I won't get a reset at home. So I'll have to be careful with my hours. I may have to start recapping my hours, but since I'm in Canada, it's 70 hours in seven days instead of like in the US where it's 70 hours in eight days. So I should be able to recap my hours just fine. I'll have to double check that tomorrow before I fully commit to going through with this because this needs to start delivering Monday. I believe yes okay then my next drop would be in swift current saskatchewan that's on the other side of the province of saskatchewan near alberta oh that would be monday afternoon okay next drop after that kindersley saskatchewan that might be wednesday afternoon that might be uh or not wednesday the Monday afternoon, it might be Tuesday, we'll see. So we've got Emerald Park, Swift Current, Kindersley, Saskatchewan. I think from here we go into Alberta. The next one is Hannah, Alberta. Then Pinoca, Alberta. And then ending off in Atchison, Alberta, just on the west side of Edmonton. That'd be a good run. Okay, what is that, six drops? Some Three in Saskatchewan and uh, three in Alberta. We'll figure it out tomorrow. I've got to do the math, look at my log books. I don't want to run out of hours and have to reset on the road. And I'm, I'm just assuming that they want me to start deliveries Monday morning. But if I could start deliveries even, even Monday afternoon or possibly Tuesday morning, then I could get a reset at home on the way past, then make sure that I don't run out of hours on my way. But it all depends when they're expecting this. According to my message in here, they're they're only expecting it Wednesday, my first delivery. So I'm thinking Tuesday might be okay because Tuesday would still be a day early. It all depends. Um, we'll have to see what happens. So thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. It was fun. We're down here at the world's largest truck stop. I went in and sniffed around a little bit inside already, and uh, oh boy, could I spend money here. Oh, one of these days I wanna take you for, I gotta dedicate a whole video to it. Just touring around the Iowa 80. It is a trucker's heaven. It's not even paradise, it's better than that. It's heaven, it's seventh heaven. It's, it's the top of the heavens. What's better than heaven? It's the throne of God. If God was a trucker, it's really good. <laughs> you know, if, if God was a trucker and he lived on earth, he would. this would be his home. It's, I can't say enough about it. There's a, uh, so you got TA fuel here. There's a trucker museum here. There's a huge laundromat for truckers here. Service center for trucks. Truck wash for trucks. Across the street is another Flying J. Across the street over there is another Flying J. Or pardon me, I think they're pilots. Same thing. It's just trucks everywhere. This, this is what I remember as a kid. This must be where that memory was from when I was a kid, where just trucks as far as you can see. Thousands of them. What feels like thousands of them. In reality, it's probably just like several hundred of them. But, oh, I love it. 
You can just feel the ground rumbling with all the diesel engines. Oh, goosebumps, right? It's so good, it's so good. I'm gonna sleep really well here. So I'll see you tomorrow. Let's go pick up that load and figure out what we're doing with it.